Today's project belongs to my good friend Scoosh, who's having some intermittent performance issues with his shiny purple instrument, and I've offered to take a look at it for him. Of course I'm referring to this Indonesian made Schechter Diamond Series double bound twin humbucker Telecaster with its quilt purple top. The issue Scoosh is having with this lies with the volume control and selector switch. The knob is noisy while the switch sometimes doesn't engage the bridge pickup. Someone else has already been inside this to hit the components with contact cleaner and that's apparently done bugger all to fix the issue, so it falls to me to do an extraction and replacement of the problematic parts. Before we get into the project though, if you like seeing videos like this then you may want to consider supporting me on Patreon. Your financial contribution there helps make all of these videos possible and lessens my reliance on sponsors and ads to fuel my addiction to being alive. Difficulties arise before I'm even inside the control cavity. The screws are spinning in place without backing out. Getting a fingernail under them and providing some upward force drives them out, but I'll have to come back to these stripped holes later in the video. The Korean made potentiometer that came out has a smaller thread than the CTS pot I'm replacing it with, meaning the hole in the guitar needs enlarged. My 9.3mm drill bit takes me most of the way there and I can finish the fit with a reamer. The switch coming out looks like this, while the Switchcraft one that I'm replacing it with, which was the only one I had to hand, looks like this. This is a low profile right angle switch I purchased as a replacement for my SG, which I ended up not needing. It does involve me modifying the inside of the cavity slightly to accommodate the new switch dimensions, which can be done neatly with a sharp Forzner bit. Normally I'd order another switch with the correct orientation, but Scoosh needs this guitar back quickly, so I'm just using the one I have to hand. I know he's not precious about these things. Small, invisible modifications are nothing compared to having a functioning, reliable instrument back in your hands with minimal delay. Now remember to scratch up the back of your pots for better solder adhesion, it really does help. Oh yeah, that knob had a hole fitted for the splines on the Korean pot shaft, which are a completely different pitch and diameter to the CTS pot that I've installed. So I had to drill out the centre hole to 6mm round and let the little grub screw hold the pot to the new shaft. If you're using a split post knurled shaft, then always align the grub screw to the slot of the shaft, as this will prevent the split shaft collapsing inside the knob. I always keep a box of long matches around to fill stripped screw holes, like those on the control cavity plate. I just whittle them round with a sharp knife, cut them to length, dip them in tight bond wood glue and stick them down the hole. The matchstick is soft enough that the pickguard screws can be driven into it directly and the additional material makes sure the screws will back out properly when they need to. Finally I'll clip off the old strings rusty from Scoochie's infamously corrosive sweat which ruins everything it touches, and I'll give the instrument a good clean up, including a quick polish of the frets using Music Nomad's fret polishing compound and revitalising the fretboard with wax based fretboard food from Rossi's Rock Shop. Then I'll string it up with a heavy bottom skindred set from Rotosound. Scoosh likes this in drop D and sometimes a half step down too, so thicker low strings will help accommodate this.
Another guitar back to functioning as it should. I really enjoy how this one sounds and plays. It has some nice features in the way of locking tuners and a satin neck, but the quality of the electronics have let this down a little bit. Those higher quality components that I've installed in this instrument should be more robust and with any luck outlast anything that Scoosh is going to throw at this instrument. And if you are curious about what kind of music Scoosh is playing on this Schecter, then you will find links in the description to Leaf Lady and the Wish Collective, a psychedelic rock project that you heard during the restoration part of this video. Video. Don't forget to click all the buttons you're supposed to to make this one viable to the ever-changing whims of the YouTube algorithm. That's all for now. Keep it loud and stay safe. And to quote Scoosh directly, Schecter can kiss my shiter.